Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're going to talk about Kalina Harper's interview with Breakbeat Media. But first, please help support this channel by liking this video and subscribing. Thanks for the support. Kalina Harper is best known as one third of bad boy group Diddy Dirty Money alongside Diddy and former Danity Kane member Dawn Richard. In a new interview, the singer speaks on her relationship both Diddy and Dawn, as well as Cassie, whom she says like getting high during her time on the label. During the chat with Brickbeat Media, Kalena shares that she always admired Diddy, saying he's someone she's always wanted to be like while calling Cassie a naive drug addict who was always willing to give everybody mother effing lap dances. She basically called Cassie a whore, okay? And when it comes to Dawn Richard, Kalina did not hold back, calling her former bandmate a weird bee. Let me tell you, this interview will have you angry, will have you feeling sad. Will ha well, let me say this. I went in already like this bee again, right? Because I don't like her. I don't like her. I think she's full of ish. I think she's hiding a lot for Diddy. Yeah, she's covering for him. So, yeah, I don't like her. So, I went in with this, oh, not this hag again. And during the interview, which I will break down, I will tell you guys all the disturbing stuff. So, you start to feel sorry for her. You know, it got a little sad. And then... You start to get angry with her all over again because of all the stuff she's saying. It's, it's crazy, you guys. So I took some notes, a lot of notes, because a lot of crazy stuff was said. And plus, I have a great memory. <laughs> okay, so Kalina was asked, what was the best time of her life? She said, dirty, dirty money. She says, diddy Sean Combs is bigger than life. Sean has always been somebody she's always wanted to be like. He inspired her as a black man. He's larger than life, she says. He gets what he wants. It's not hard for Diddy to hype up a party or a studio. He's coffee. He is the cocaine the white pure cocaine. That's how she described him. And let me say this. She seemed like she was high herself on this white pure cocaine that she was describing Diddy as being. She looks like an addict to me. Okay. So here's what she said about her traumatic household. This is very disturbing, you guys. So this is a warning. So Kalina grew up in a traumatic household. Her father was a Muslim drill sergeant, and he didn't really like her. She said that allowed her to accept certain things from people in general. She said nothing people can say to her can make her feel bad because her stepdad was already doing it. He made her feel smaller than life. She said she expressed that to Diddy. Diddy knew that, you see? They like to get people from broken homes. I've said this so many times. They find people from broken homes. And I said, do not believe their rags to riches stories, how, how they were discovered. All of that is BS. They like people who are desperate and who comes from broken homes. Okay, so she said Diddy knew that because she expressed that to Diddy. She told Diddy about her past. So she ran away from home at 17 years old. Her mom had her at 16. Her real dad was 24. A 24-year-old man dating a 16-year-old girl. She said a lot of black moms are their daughter's first enemy. First enemy. Wow. She says because 
you know, the mothers are watching their daughters grow into a woman, watching, you know, their daughter attract men, creates jealousy. That is disturbing. And you know what's crazy? This is not the first time I've heard this. I watched a podcast months ago where a black woman was saying the same thing. Like, black women have to deal with their jealous mothers who are jealous of them. And she said a lot of black mothers hate their black daughters. That is wild. Okay. She said her mom punched her in the face and made her eye bleed. And that's when she said, F this and left. No one knew she was sleeping in her car. She would get up and she would go to the studio at 8 in the morning. So no one knew she was homeless. She says she had a little hoopty car, a hoopty her stepdad had bought her. She found out at 14 years old that her stepdad was not her biological dad. She says her mother was M-O-L-E-S-T-E-D. She says a lot of incest went on in her family. She says her uncles are pedos and all worders. That is sick. She says her uncles, their victims, are now reaching out to her through Facebook. Okay? Her mother caught her uncle all wording a three-year-old between the tub and the toilet. Okay? This made me, I wanted to freaking, oh my gosh. She said the mother walked in, not before it happened. It was a full-blown S-E-X. Well, she didn't use the word S-E-X. She used the word F, right? Yeah, so it, it, that's sick. You know what her mom did? Her mom took the three-year-old and spanked the three-year-old and then took the three-year-old downstairs to her parents. And they prayed around the baby. They prayed that the sexual demons would be out of this baby. Wow, so it's the baby's fault. It was the baby who was a seductress. You hear this? Her uncle gave the baby syphilis and chlamydia. A three-year-old. Oh, my God. Both uncles was all wording this baby. Kalina's sister, who's older, was taken, was being checked out, you know, the uncles, the pedos, her pedo uncles were checking her out and getting her ready. I guess they were grooming her sister. Kalina was just 18 months at the time. She said she's not sure if her uncles all worded her when, she's a, when she was a baby. She doesn't recall. She said maybe she was too young to remember. And guess what? Even their dog name was called R-Word. You know, R-A-P-I-S-T. Yeah, R-A-P-I-S-T was the dog's name. How sick is this? So can you imagine calling your dog R-Word? Come here, R-Word. Come here. Oh, my gosh. They all still talk to the uncles. Uncles be there at Christmas. And this is some sickish. So her mom is raising her kids in Texas with her stepdad. She doesn't have custody of her kids. I guess her mom and her are going through, you know, custody battle through the court system. She says her grandmother, Kalina's grandmother, was a heroin addict. She left her babies at home with a grown man. Her grandmother had two sets of twins, 11 months apart, and they were all M-O-L-E-S-T-E-D, you know the M word, by the age of three and up. Wow. They were all being 
M O L E S T E D. And when they were left alone, the kids were doing things with each other. So not only were they they were being the M word M O L E S T E D, but the kids were also doing things with each other to each other. Wow. Anyway, her biological father have thirty three kids, and Kalina is the second oldest. Thirty three kids. With all these women, her dad committed s u i c i d e. You know, committed shoe size. Let's just say shoe size in two thousand nine. It was a m word shoe size. You know, m word m u r d e r, and shoe size. Yeah. So he committed shoe size after. The, after unaliving his mistress in front of her seven-year-old daughter, so the dad unalived the mistress in front of her seven-year-old daughter, and then took his own life. Her dad was a child psychologist with thirty-three kids. Oh my goodness, Kalina got emotional. Talking about the seven-year-old girl who witnessed the crime, Kalina says she come from the hood, from the dirt of North Philly in the eighties. Kalina married her husband in two thousand nine, but been with him for twenty years. He had seven kids when they met, and they have four kids together, so a total of eleven. Kids, and her four kids with him, her mom is raising them. And the guy had a baby on her. The husband was cheating, had a baby on her. They have a lot of trust issues. She said they would f each other up, and their fights. So the fights were physical. She said she would hit him in the head with mugs. Cause him to bleed. He would need stitches. She said she had anger issues. Her anger issues was worse than his. Okay, so then she was asked about her name being mentioned in Dawn Richards' lawsuit. She was mad that Dawn mentioned her in her Diddy lawsuit. She said. Had Dawn told her about what was going on with Diddy, it would have been on like Don King Kong. <laughs> Don King Kong. Am I saying this right? She said they would have jumped Diddy. She said she became closer to Diddy, but going in, Dawn and Diddy were closer. She said Diddy Diddy can be catty. Diddy kept them distant. It was a control thing. She said, "Dawn probably thought she was getting more money than her, but she don't think that was it." She said, "Um, she didn't see any of that." She said, "What I saw was what the f is going on with you because you acting weird. You're a weird b is what I see, and it's a list of n words where you're at. Talk about it. Dawn's a weird mother effer, man." She said, "Broke mother effers will do anything for money." Okay, so when asked about Cassie, she had this to say. She said, "Cassie liked getting high. She liked partying." She said, "Cassie was well taken care of. She was spoiled. Her condo that Diddy paid for was wow. The stairs were like glass." She says Cassie was getting an allowance, uh, maybe close to twenty something thousand a week. Then she says she don't know how much Cassie was getting because you know, yeah, Cassie wasn't serious about business. She says Cassie was just having a good time as a young girl. She says she saw Cassie grow up from a little girl that was willing to like give everybody mother effing lap dances. 
she would get drunk and get high and just have a good time, like model time. She says the last conversation she had with Cassie, she saw this woman who was done with the ish and was ready for kids. She said the last conversation she had with Cassie, she saw this woman who was done with the ish and was ready for kids. She recalled when she went to see Diddy and Kalina was pregnant. She went to see Diddy and she went to the bathroom and Cassie was hanging out in the bathroom with model Jessica White. And when she walked in, Cassie pointed at Kalina's pregnant belly and said, see, this is what I want. Kalina said she didn't see Cassie being kept somewhere. She didn't want to be. Kalina said she saw the videotape like everybody else, but she never saw that in person. She's saying she never saw Diddy abusing Cassie in person. She's a liar. Kalina is a freaking liar. Okay, so she was asked if Cassie ever confided in her. She said, normal-ish, every girl say things like they hate their men. She says it all looked normal to her. And at the time, she was going through her own trauma and she was fighting her husband. She says she didn't have that much space in her head for that kind of rant. She said she didn't have that kind of space in her head for somebody to sit and talk to her about them being abused when she needed her own men to treat her better. Kalina said she wished Cassie Lawsuit talked about the whole truth of her side. She said she wished they talked about all of the beautiful moments Cassie had with Diddy too. And then... She did something so grimy, and right there, it showed why she did this interview. She said she saw Cassie with Diddy after Kim died. She said, wasn't she with the other guy already? I think she had left, right? She was in a whole nother relationship with the trainer that Puff paid for. Check out the clip, you guys. To stay on her too, too long. What do you make of her whole suit and you know the, the money that she look? Got? I'm proud of anybody who speaks up and um stands up for themselves, yeah. but I feel like I wish I could have heard the whole truth of her side. I wish they would have talked about all of the beautiful moments that she had with Pump mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the pebble in a shoe concept, you know, this one situation is exacerbated. But if I'm not mistaken, I seen her with Puff after Kim died. Wasn't she with that other guy already? Hmm. I, I think she had left, right? She was like in a whole other relationship with the trainer that puff paid for. Hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just feel like I was shocked, to say the least. You see? You see? That was grimy. That was to cast doubt in people's minds, okay? Okay, so she was seen with Diddy when she was with the trainer after she left Diddy, okay, he had a strong hold on her. And not only that, in the lawsuit, Cassie mentioned that after she left Diddy, she was with Alex. She had met up with Diddy for dinner to say their final goodbye, like to, you know, really end the relationship for good, like just go their separate ways for good. And when Diddy dropped her off, Diddy forced his way into her house and tried to kiss her. She kept saying no. He pinned her down with one hand while he, you know, removed his whatever. Yeah, he all ordered her right there. Right there after their final goodbye dinner. Okay? So why didn't Kalina mention that part? She wanted to put it out there. Oh, well, I saw her with Diddy after she left, after Kim died, after she was with the trainer. Okay? What does that have to do with him abusing her? 
Kalina. But we'll get to that. So anyway, Kalina said if she's called to tell the truth, she would tell the truth. Yeah, right. She said everybody was there in a part of that ish. She says men were effing men and bees were saying they didn't like to F bees. Everybody was there with the ish. She says she used to date girls even though she's married to a man. And she is dedicated to him. But if she had to choose, she would choose bees. You know, B-I-T-C-H-E-S. So she's a lesbian. Anyway, her and her husband be having their own freak offs. But that's her business, she says. She says she don't care what people do, what people like, as long as it's not children because of her awkward uncles. Hmm. You sure about that, Kalina? You don't care what they do as long as it's not children? You sure about that? Because we do know. Everyone knows. We all know about the underage abuse that goes on in that filthy industry. All of them. The acting, the sports, the music industry. All of them. We know this. This is a system. This is their belief. So, yeah. Anyway, she then mentioned that her mom hit her in the face on Mother's Day in the ICU while her son was sitting there. Okay, but check this out. When Diddy gave her her checks, she would always... Okay, she says always, she would always spend some money on Diddy. She would go buy him a pair of sneakers or a piece of art. She wanted him to know that she appreciates what he's doing for her, for giving her an opportunity. Did I not tell you guys? Did I not say this? On my first video on Kalina, I said... She does not care about the abuse. She don't care about what happened. She's just so happy to be famous. She happy that she made it. She happy that she was able to get out of the slums. I said this. I said this. She's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, this happened, but at least I'm known. Yeah, I know, but at least I'm famous. I said this, and she pretty much confirmed this. She, Diddy would give her her check that she worked for, and she would take some of that money. She would always go buy Diddy something, a pair of sneakers or a piece of art, okay? So do you think someone like her is going to tell you the truth about Diddy? Oh, yeah, this should tell you everything. Okay, we don't even need to hear anything else from Kalina after all this. She also claimed she doesn't have any bad memory and dirty money. Or with Diddy. Oh my gosh. She argued with Diddy like cats and dogs. She said she wouldn't change anything. Like the private jets, the photo, the Vogue yeah, the Vogue photo shoot, she would not change nothing, she said. Her word, she wouldn't change nothing. She never had a bad experience with, no bad memory with Diddy. <laughs> like, you can't even, like, come on. Like, you know she's full of ish. She is pathetic. Anyway, she was asked, how does she feel about being the reason Diddy Bell got denied? Because remember, uh, prosecutors showed his call logs. He had called Kalina at least 54 times after his houses were raided. Okay? So she said she would tell him to keep his head up and talk to God. She said there are dudes 
unaliving people and dropping bodies in front of houses, and people are worrying about baby oil and men effing men with their booty tooted up looking for an opportunity. This hag. This hack thinks this is all just about men having sex with men for opportunities. She knows that he was accused of m-wording a lot of people, from Biggie, Tupac, Kim Porter, so many people, a lot. And she think we should not be worrying about Diddy while. People are unaliving people. Diddy has been accused of unaliving people. Okay, Kalina, and you know this. And not only, this is not just men having SEX with men for opportunities. This is about trafficking. This is, this thing is way bigger than what they're even saying. This is the system. Okay, this is a cabal. This, oh my gosh, I don't even want to get into how deep this thing is. But Kalina knows this. And her saying she wished the lawsuit mentioned more about their good times. Cassie and Diddy's good times. Is she, like, oh my gosh. Why would an abused lawsuit mention some good times and you having a good time with someone does not erase the bad the evil the demonic stuff that they've done to you you see she came from a traumatic childhood she's been abused okay she had a terrible household incest everything mom beating and all that like everybody in her family like they effed up, right? And so that's why coming into the industry, seeing these demonic abuse and these evil stuff, it does not faze her because she grew up in that. She was raised in that kind of lifestyle environment. So what Diddy was doing to these people is nothing. It's nothing for her. That's why she said, oh, I didn't have space in my head for Cassie to rant about her abuse. Because, you know, because she said she saw it as normal stuff. She didn't see anything, you know, out of the norm because she grew up in that toxic, demonic household. So that's why she doesn't, she can lie for Diddy. She's just so happy to have made it. She's buying Diddy gifts. Every check that he, he, he gives her, she's buying him gifts to show him that she appreciates the opportunity. Okay? This guy is a billionaire. The blood money that he pays you, you use that same money to buy him gifts. Okay? Oh, my goodness. She's just so happy. To have made it, she doesn't care about what happened to her, what happened to other people around her. She's just so happy that she is known. She's just so happy. She don't care about no abuse, nothing. She's just so happy because she grew up in that environment. She grew up in that toxicity. She doesn't care. She's just so happy. That's all she cares about. She's just so happy that she's a little bit known. She has a little fan. I don't know. Does she have fans? I don't know. But she's just so happy. That's all. And that's sad. So I want to read some of the comments. So someone said, on Love and Hip Hop, she said her and her husband loved freak-offs before we knew what they were. It's documented. She's either trying to gain empathy because she knows what's coming. Someone said, I also think they are looking at the fact that she's lying and forgot she told the world on Love and Hip Hop ATL that her and her husband were swingers. She's not being fully truthful. Plus, her husband is close to Diddy. 
Someone else says, no wonder Diddy prayed on her. She was already vulnerable. Demons, no other demons. Her husband, Tony Vick, is a great friend of Diddy. So she's protecting her husband and Diddy. So yeah, it's obvious. Someone said she admitted on the show that her husband stepped out a couple of times. So her husband cheated a couple of times. Someone said, my thought exactly. She also showed how her and her husband preyed on their artists by sleeping with them and withholding singles studio time. So it's not hard to see which side, which side she's on. Okay. So she's just like Diddy. So her and her husband are swingers. They get down with freak offs and they sleep with their artists. So yeah, Kalina. So this is why she's out here swinging for Diddy. She is swinging. She is trying to do damage control. So yeah. So this is what it's all about. This is why she did the interview. Okay, she knows that he's a monster, but she's used to monsters. She grew up with monsters and her mother having her kids when the mother did not protect her and the whole family has dealt with incest and pedos, all waters. Yeah, what an environment. So yeah, she's just as toxic as Diddy. And they like people like her who come from broken homes, abusive homes, you know. So, who uh, are man, listen. So yeah. So this is why she's out there doing damage control, trying to, you know, low key trash Cassie, saying she was spoiled. You know, she was getting an allowance, so that means what? Because she was spoiled, because she was partying it up, and because she loved to get high? Well, he could be the reason why. He turned her into a druggie. He turned her into a druggie. So we should just like, oh, let's just pay that, never mind. You know, let's forget about the abuse. Yeah, she would be having a good time. She was having fun. Yeah, so let's forget about the bad things because she was being uh she was being spoiled. She is sick. Kalina is sick. Kalina is sick. And to so then throw Dawn under the bus saying she's just a weird bee. It's like what? Kalina, you are going to get was coming to you because for you to side with a monster knowing that this guy is a demon but you want to protect her because you're so glad and so thankful he gave you an opportunity to be a little bit known to make a little money so it's okay that's because you're used to toxic you are you know desensitized to all these things that happen because of what happened when you were growing up. So that means you don't care about any other people, you know, you don't care about people being abused because that's all you know. So that's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. So Kalina is a pathetic freaking loser. And this interview is not going to save is not going to help Diddy, Kalina, okay? But I'm glad you did this interview because now we know. We know how sick you are. You know how you, you get down, you and your husband get down. We know. You are a lesbian who married and or married a man, but saying that if you had, a, if you had to choose, you would choose women. What the heck? Anyway... Yeah, so this and so yeah, she's perfect for that industry. She's perfect for that industry. She fits right in. 
Kalina fits right in. Anyway, you guys, that's all I have. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe and leave comments. I like to read them. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.